All right, this video is for uh, finding the equation of a tangent line to a function if given a point not on the function. So here we're dealing with some pretty good calculus type problem here. Definitely going to use derivatives because we're dealing with the tangent line. But the key is that this problem is different because we're finding the uh, equation of a tangent line to a point that's not on the function. So keep in mind to find the equation of a tangent line, you need two things. You need the slope m of that tangent line. You need a point, x comma y, of tangency. Now keep in mind, that point of tangency is on the function. That point of tangency is on the function. And that's the problem. And the problems that we're going to look at in this video, the point I give you is not on the function. See, the problem is very easy if the point you are given is the point of tangency on the function. Because all you got to do is take the x value, plug it into your derivative, and you get the slope. So you have your point of tangency, because I gave it to you, and then you use that point with your derivative to find the slope. But the trick on these problems is the point I give you is not the point of tangency makes the problems a little bit extra hard. So let's take a look at the problem I'm talking about. That way you can completely understand it. We want to find the equation of the line that is tangent to the function below x squared minus 10x plus 22 and passes through the given point negative 1 comma 8. Now if we use my graph here, negative 1 comma 8 is over here somewhere, right? Negative 1 comma 8 is right here. It's not on the function. So I need to find a very, very specific line that is passing through that point. That point is again negative 1 comma 8 and is tangent to this function. Now, I could start drawing some lines to kind of estimate where that point might be, but it's, it's clearly not going to be right here because that's not going to be a point of tangency. Looks like it's going to be somewhere down around... I don't, you know, quite know exactly somewhere around here, right? I'm just trying to make it roughly, right? Where this line is going to come in, cross the point I gave you, and so it's a pretty bad line, and then just touch that line. Again, my drawing is really, really bad. But the thing I want you to understand is that there might be a second one, because remember, this function is going up forever. So there might be another point or another line going here that would eventually come up there and cross 10. And again, I'm doing a very bad job drawing the lines, but you get the idea is that I'm trying to find the equation of a line that is tangent to my function and crosses this point, negative 1, comma 8. And because I have a problem here, there could be possibly two answers. Now, the trick is, how do I find this line? Well, remember, I need two things to find an equation of a line. I need a slope, m, and I need a point. Well, the good news is I have a point. I have the point I need. That's like the wonderful news. I need the slope. And this is what's fairly tricky for this problem. Here's what I need to do. I need to think about this point of tangency. I need the point of tangency. Go back here. The two things you need to find the equation of a tangent line is the slope of the tangent line and the point of tangency. Well, I need to find that point of tangency. For right now, I'm just going to call that point x, comma, f of x, right? Because that's what it is. I don't know what the point is, but it's x comma y, f of x and y the same thing. So I have the point that I was given, and I also know that the point I'm looking for, the point of tangency, is f comma f of x. Now, okay, think about I want to find this line. What do I need to find that line? I need to find that line slope m. But wait a minute. If I have two points, I know how to find slope. All I got to do is take the y value from the one point, we'll call that f of x, minus the y value from the other point, we'll call that 8, divided by the x minus, which turns into a plus 1. So it'd be x minus negative 1. So the idea here is all I'm doing is I'm thinking about this line, right? I'm visualizing this line that I want. I know that it crosses negative 1, comma 8, and I also know that it's eventually, at some point, going to cross the point of tangency. But I don't know the point of tangency. I'm just calling it x comma f of x for right now. So I can find the slope of that line by just thinking about my slope formula. y minus y on top, x minus x on the bottom. Now, what else can I do? Well, here's the kicker, right? I don't know the slope m, but I know a formula for the slope m. It's called the derivative, right? Now, the derivative for this function f prime of x is equal to 2x minus 10. Now, I knew that because I did the work to the side already. If you don't know how to do the work to find that derivative, you probably should pause this video and practice it real quick, but that is the derivative right there, 2x minus 10. So here's what's going on here. I have no idea what the slope is, right? I have no idea what my point of tangency x is, but 
Just imagine if you did. If I knew what that point of tangency was, I would plug it into my slope. 2x minus 10. And that slope should be equal to the same slope of I'm thinking about here, which is f of x minus 8 divided by x plus 1. And here's the idea. This is the slope using the derivative, right? Right here, 2x minus 10, that's the slope using the derivative. But that slope should be equal to the just thinking about the slope between two points, right? Well, that's what this right side is. So now all I've got to do is solve for x. And what I'm going to try to find is the x value of my point of tangency. And now all I've got to do is solve this. So I have 2x minus 10 equals f of x. By the way, what's f of x? x squared minus 10x plus 22, minus 8, all divided by x plus 1. That is my um, equation here. So now I just got to solve this equation. Let's see here. Let me cross multiply. I can treat this 2x minus 10 and cross multiply. So I get 2x minus 10 times x plus 1 equals x squared minus 10x, 22 minus 8. If you need to use a calculator for that, I hope that's a, you know, a bad thing. But anyway, 22 minus 8 is 14. All right, so now I just got to multiply this out here. I get 2x squared. I get a 2x on the outside, a negative 10x on the inside. So that's going to be negative 8x minus 10 equals x squared minus 10x plus 14. Now I have a quadratic. I want to solve it. I prefer that I have a positive x squared, so I'm actually going to subtract the x squared over here. So that's going to give me 2x squared minus x squared is a 1x squared. I'm going to add the 10x over, which would give me positive 2x, and I'm going to subtract the 14 over, which gives me a minus 24 equals 0. Now, I got a quadratic. I got to solve it. You could use the quadratic formula. You can factor. You can use a calculator. You can use, or use technology. You can complete the square. I'm going to factor this because it's actually pretty easy to factor. x plus 6 times x minus 4 equals 0, which means I have two values. I have x equals negative 6 and x equals, uh, I'm sorry, x equals 4. All right, now, these are the two points of tangency where my slope is going to come. Right? Now, let me understand, right? Here's the first one right here. It's actually at x equals 2, so I, or at x equals 4, so I didn't do a great job of drawing it, but it's at x equals 4. Right around here somewhere is the better place where I should have drawn that. That is my point of tangent. But remember, but when I first started drawing, I didn't really know where it was at. But there is another place at negative 6, which is way up here somewhere. I can't even see it, but way, way, way up somewhere is my other point, my other place where I could draw this line. So, I'm ready to start getting my answers here. Now, remember, I need two things. I need a point, and I need slopes. Well, I already know the point. The one point I'm going to use, it's actually the same point for both lines, because look at intersects, both lines right here, is negative 1, 8. So I already have a point. What I need is my slope. Well, how do I find the slope? I just got to use the derivative, 2x minus 10. So if I plug negative 6 into that, I get 2 times negative 6 minus 10. 2 times negative 6 minus 10 is a slope of negative 22. And if I use this other equation here, my slope would be plugging in 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 10 is negative 2. So I get these two slopes here. Um, hopefully that is pretty easy. Hopefully you understand that. Hopefully that's not a major problem there. So let's see here. So now I've got to come up with the equations. So let's do this one first. Y minus 8 equals negative 22 times x plus 1. And this equation would be y minus 8 equals negative 2 times x plus 1. And that's it, right? That's pretty simple. I hope you agree. Um, let me just kind of go through that one more time. If you need to, that's fine. The idea is very simple. I'd only, I don't have a point of tangency, but I need a point of tangency. So I just pretended that I knew what it was, x comma f of x. Then I found the slope between my point, negative 1 comma 8, and my point of tangency, x comma f of x, by using my basic slope formula. And that slope would be equal to the derivative, because derivative is also a formula for slope. So basically, I have two formulas for slope. Set them equal to each other and solve for x. And I got two x values, negative 6 and 4. And both of them led me to two different lines that would become 
tangent to my function. One of them is pretty easy to see in the graph. The other one is kind of hard to see. That's because the point is way, way, way off the graph, but it is there. So hopefully that makes sense to you. If I need to discuss more in class, I certainly can. I am going to do one more problem. Now, if you want to pause and try this problem on your own, feel free. But here I go. I have another function, x plus 5 over x minus 3. And I have another point that's not on the graph. It's at uh, 1 comma 1 right? And I want to find an equation of a line that passes through the point 1 comma 1 and is tangent to this function. So if I just think about it, it looks like it might be somewhere right around here. Again, I, I have no idea, to be honest. I'm just trying to draw approximate would be somewhere right around there. But I know this point is 1 comma 1, and I know this point, well, I don't know the point of tangency, so I'm just going to call it x comma f of x. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come up with two formulas for slope. One, using old school algebra f of x, that's just y, minus the y-coordinate from the other point, x minus the x-coordinate from the other point. So I have y minus 1 divided by x minus 1. That's just using basic slope. But I also know the derivative, right? Now, again, I'm going to go to the side. I already did all the work to find the derivative. The derivative of this function is negative 8 over x minus 3 squared. If you need to pause the video to prove that to yourself, go ahead, but we should become very familiar with finding derivatives by now. So I'm going to set that equal to negative 8 over x minus 3 squared. Okay, so now all i got to do is solve this equation, and I'm going to get the x points of tangency. All right, now, solving this is going to be a little bit tricky. Let me first fill in f of x. So I have negative 8 over x minus 3 squared f of x, if you recall, is the original function. The original function is x plus 5 over x minus 3 minus 1, all divided by x minus 1. All right, now that right side is pretty ugly, so again, I'm going to use all the algebra skills I know to get that right-hand side to get cleaned up. First up on top, I need my common denominator, which would be x minus 3. That's going to be x plus 5 minus x minus 3, which would be x plus 3, because I have to run a negative through it. Remember, basically, I need to treat this 1 as x minus 3 over x minus 3 to get my common denominator. And then instead of dividing everything by x minus 1, I'm going to times by 1 over x minus 1. I'll multiply by my reciprocal. And I get negative 8 over x minus 3 squared. That was my derivative. On the right-hand side here, let's see, on top, those x's cancel, and I just get 8 over x minus 3 times x minus 1. Now I could cross multiply, and I'm going to get negative 8 times x minus 3 times x minus 1 equals 8 times x minus 3 squared. Okay, well, one thing I can do to both sides is divide by 8. That instantly gets rid of those 8s. And then I'm going to do some multiplication. So there is going to be a negative left here on the left. So let's see, that's going to be x squared uh, minus 4x plus 3. On the right-hand side, x minus 3 squared is going to be x squared minus 6x plus 9. One more time, again, those 8s did cancel. I just divided both sides by 8. Distribute this negative, negative x squared plus 4x minus 3 equals x squared minus 6x plus 9. I want my x squared to be positive, so I'm going to add to the right side. I'm going to move everything to the right side. When I add an x squared, I get 2x squared. I'm going to subtract 4, so I get negative 10x. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to add 3, so I get a plus 12. Now, again, i got to solve this. I could use the quadratic formula. I could factor. I can use technology. I can complete the square, whatever. i got to solve this. I'm actually going to factor it, but I'm going to make my factoring easier if I pull out a 2 first. So I get x squared minus 5x plus 6. Now it becomes a lot easier to factor. Just kind of leave that 2 to the side there. x minus, let's see here, x minus 3 and x minus 2 should do it. So I get two points of tangency. I get x equals 3 and x equals 2. So I have two points of tangency. Okay, so now all i got to do is find my derivative at each of these places. And to do that, I'm going to use my derivative. Recall the derivative... Um, I'm going to rewrite instead of scrolling up. is negative 8 over x minus 3 squared. All right, this first one, right, to find the derivative, plug in x, 3 minus 3. Uh-oh, 3 minus 3 is going to be a 0 in the denominator. That can't happen. Now, what that means is that this is undifferentiable. It's not differentiable right there, so I don't have to worry about that. It means that that option is not possible. 
Let's try this other option. Plug in 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 8 divided by 1 is negative 8. So I get a slope of negative 8. Now remember, I do need a point. I'm going to use the point that I was given, 1 comma 1. If you want to, you could also use the point of tangency. Now the only thing you'd have to do is find the y coordinate. You'd have to find the y coordinate for the point of tangency just by plugging 2 into the function. Remember, functions help you find y. But since I already have a point, might as well use it. So y minus 1 equals negative 8 times x minus 1. That would be my line or my um, tangency there. So uh, my, my equation of my tangent line. So hopefully that worked out for you and hopefully that was pretty simple. I don't think that that was anything too, too confusing or too, too hard. Um, but if you look at the picture, that line I just found right there would be perfect. It would be right there. Um, my line of tangency right there. So apparently that point was 2 comma, and again, you could use your function to figure out that b. That would be what, 7 over, that would be what, negative 7, 2 comma negative 7, um, if all I did was plugged in 2 to my function. So now that I have my point of tangency and I got my slope using the derivative, life is pretty easy. All right, so hopefully that helps you do number 7, number 8 on your worksheet that we had in class, and everything will be good. Let me know if you have any questions.